What's the difference between story and information? Information allows us to construct a lens for seeing the world. Story allows us to experience the world. Information is processed in a certain part of our brain that deals with logic. Story is processed in a part of our brain that deals with emotions, with feelings. And as much as we would like to think that we make decisions in life based on information, I would suggest we make decisions in life based on feelings, based on emotion. And then we go looking for evidence to support those things. So if we think about what drives human decision making, I believe story is much more active in our decision making process of moving through the world than information. I may have all the good information in the world about something, but if my gut tells me, do this, I usually am going to listen to my gut. In the same way, um, I've seen a lot of wonderful documentary stories that provide me information about certain ways I should eat, certain ways I should exercise, certain ways that I should live, and I'm compelled by that information, but rarely has it ever caused me to change my behavior. But a good story, that has caused me to change my behavior before. I've been compelled by someone's story. Perhaps another way of looking at it is the fact that information is in the domain of things. Facts, figures, numbers, stories, or in the domain of people. Have you ever heard of a story that didn't have at least one character? I don't think it exists. I don't think we can have a story without at least one character. Even if that character is a tree or a rock, it takes on some sort of personified presence and becomes a character in the story. Stories are innately connected to humans to people. Information, not so much. Information can be about completely inanimate things. Stories are always going to involve some aspect of humanity, of the human experience. What's the difference between framework and storytelling? The framework of a story are those things which the story hang upon. Many times I've found that storytellers become very nervous when it comes to discussions around framework. Many storytellers become nervous that they're going to somehow be boxed in by using structure in a storytelling or using some sort of framework. We seem to be the only um, artists who get greatly concerned about this. I've never once encountered a musician who said, you know, I'm just not going to use any of the existing musical notes that are out there. I'm going to invent my own new musical note. I've never encountered a, um, a, a painter who said, you know, I'm not going to use any variation of the primary colors. I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to invent new colors. I've never met a, um, an architect that said, I'm going to go build a house, but no blueprint. None. Not going to use one. Just going to build it. Also, I don't want a house that has a ceiling or a floor or windows or walls or doors. Don't want any of that stuff in there. But we, as storytellers, often completely reject these elements of the framework that makes a story effective. Now, does that mean that every story needs to be alike? No, in the same way that not every house is alike. Right? We can build a house with the same you know, floor and ceiling and windows and doors, but that house can look completely different. Is every song alike because they may use the same notes? Is every work of art the same because you might use similar colors or the same colors in it? No. In the same way, we must learn to embrace framework as storytellers because it is not for us. 
here's the, the, the hard truth about storytelling. As storytellers, we don't tell stories for us. We tell it for others. We don't embrace framework for us. We embrace framework for those who will encounter the stories we create. How do we know if our story is meandering? Many storytellers run into this issue where they are working out the story as they're telling it. This can lead to meandering. Not always. We have to be in touch with ourself uh, to, to recognize the type of storyteller that we are. Some of us like to craft and construct the story as we're telling it. But rarely is that the version of the story that we should be taking to an audience. Many times we are going to need to work with that clay further before we want to bring it out to others. Now I recognize we live in an age uh, where we celebrate everything we ever do creatively, and many of us uh, will put everything we ever do up on YouTube. But to be honest with you, I wonder what our art might be like if we considered 80, 90% of what we create, of what we write, of what we film to be practice for that 10% that we bring out in the world. Again, if we turn, we turn to other crafts, we look at a, a, um, a symphony orchestra violinist. She very well may spend 90% of her time practicing the violin in rooms that no one will ever see her in order for that 10% that goes up on the stage to be excellent. So often, as writers and storytellers, we forget this is a craft, and a craft is dependent upon our practice. And the more that we practice, the better we get at the craft. And we don't have to necessarily uh, bring everything we do uh, up to the audience. My opinion, we should be taking what we do finding the appropriate and proper framework for that story, which may take a process, it may take development, but once we have it, only then do we bring it out and share it with the world. How do people use story to make sense of the world? Human beings have been using story to make sense of the world since we were first able to articulate anything, even before language. When people were still creating images on the walls of caves, somehow story was coming out. People have used story to make sense of the world because part of the human experience is recognizing that there is mystery, that we don't know what's happening here. We don't know if there's something greater than us, something beyond us. And we're trying to work it out. We're all doing the best we can to work through these issues that we all seem to share as human beings and trying to come to some sense of what it means. What does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to be conscious? What does it mean to be human? Is there a difference between what you are seeing and experiencing in the world and what I am seeing and experiencing in the world? Is, is the color that you call blue the color that I call red and we just trade names for it? We don't know anything except for our own experience. And that leaves us insecure. It leaves us unsure. But our comfort comes from exchanging stories, telling each other the stories that we have about the way the world looks to us. And even when we don't get it right, we hear each other's stories and we say, ah, I take comfort in that. I feel better because what you said, it resonates with me. And it makes me feel like maybe I am not alone here. I would suggest to you the grand 
achievement of any great storyteller is making someone feel a little less alone in the world.